Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I wanted to discuss a comment that showed up on Reddit a while back. It was something along the lines of, I like the idea of right to repair, but just to be clear, I wouldn't give up anything about how my device is currently manufactured, even if it was way more fixable. So for instance, I would not want them to make the battery user replaceable. Now I responded to this concern and I said that there's nothing in any of the right to repair legislation throughout the United States that would mandate that the manufacturer change how they design the device, whether they want to rivet the keyboard in or screw the keyboard in, whether whether they want to use a thousand screws or three screws, whether they want to seal the battery inside or whether they want to make the battery easily modular and user replaceable. Right to repair legislation is not about the design of the device. I don't want to get into that because that is incredibly complicated. We're asking for the bare legal minimum necessary to do our job. So what we're saying is, I don't care if you seal the battery in or have it be user replaceable, just make sure that these are actually available for people to get. Or if a charging chip dies inside your phone, allow me to be able to buy that charging chip from the manufacturer rather than telling the company that makes it, don't sell this chip to anybody but us so that I can't fix it. But I wanted to make it clear that that uh, this type of legislation would not mandate that the manufacturer change the way they design the product. So whether it's a glued-in, sealed-in battery or a user-replaceable battery, it is uh, not a part of this legislation. That being said, the question does come up, why are people advocating against their own self-interest in this way? Why would somebody say, I don't want a device with a user-removable battery? When it comes to your smartphone, the first thing that's going to go bad in your phone is the battery. That's the first thing that is going to go bad because it has a finite uh, life cycle. It's going to go bad at some point in time or it's, if it doesn't go completely bad, it's going to be the part of your phone that loses its, uh, it, its newness, its uh, performance quicker than everything else. It's a disposable part. It's a battery. They run out. Why would you not want the battery to be replaceable? I understand if you said, you know, I'll buy it even if they sealed it in because I like the product. But for someone to say, I'm not going to buy a device unless they locked me out of being able to replace the battery. Spank me harder, daddy. Spank me harder. Like, why? What kind of abusive relationship is this where people actually prefer devices where they seal the battery in? What are you benefiting? We had super hyper thin smartphones even when they had user replaceable batteries. When it comes to liquid resistance, the Samsung S5 had a user replaceable battery and also had liquid resistance to it that it advertised. Now some may say that the liquid, it wasn't really liquid resistant, you needed to seal the battery in. You always need to have the battery sealed in the device to have liquid resistance. And I just call BS on that. It's so crazy how people forget how things work even a few years ago, or even how they are right now. So for instance, let's just take a um, recent example. Someone actually linked me to in a video. So this is me swimming in the ocean. I said this has nothing to do with repair. I am swimming in an ocean in Florida, and this is a saltwater ocean, like just about every ocean. And there's a bunch of salt water, and I'm swimming in it with my camera. The camera that I'm using is a DJI Action 4K. That's this camera right over here. Now, this is the exact same camera that I was swimming with in the ocean. Let's see if it turns on. It turned on, and it lit up, and it made its happy little chime. And check this out. Watch this. Ready? The battery is user replaceable and removable. Look at that. Now, it's crazy how technology evolves because that camera does about 90% of what this camera does at a very similar, if not the same quality. That can actually do 4K 60. This is stuck at 4K 30. Now, granted, with this camera, you can do, uh, you know, I can zoom and I can do other stuff that I can't really do with that one. So you got zoom. You have a bit better uh, low light performance, although that one does have a really cool HDR mode. But for the most part, it's this camera costs three times as much as that one when it came out. And not four times, actually. This one's like 1,000 bucks. This thing was like 269. And th this is liquid resistant. Whereas this thing is not. So people are constantly f finding out ways to make things smaller and more compact while making them liquid resistant. That technology does exist. You know it's not liquid resistant though? You know it's not liquid resistant because somebody remembered. I know that they read my YouTube comments because they were able to point out my idiocy immediately. My Samsung S9 that I accidentally took in the ocean. So over here... I said, I accidentally, I actually forgot my phone in my pocket while doing this video in response to next up, Lewis doing a video on a repair of a device with seawater damage. So my, my, my DJI, which has a user replaceable battery, which is, this is a really, really tiny compact camera, by the way, this was able to survive and I just dropped it. It's really, it's really good at surviving that that was able to survive underwater, but my smartphone that has the battery sealed into it was immediately dead 
after I accidentally took it into the ocean. Why do we believe this propaganda? Like, why are people so excited to advocate against their own self-interests? I'm not even saying that right to repair legislation is asking for the battery to be uh, you know, replaceable versus sealed into the device. So that, that is a moot point. But aside from that, let's just put that aside for a second. Why would people prefer devices that have a, a finite lifespan? Why would you actually want to sit in a kitchen with a heat gun and then like a little piece of mold denim wire or dental floss and do <coughs> over and over again like <coughs> to pry the back of your phone off or you know have to buy a hot plate most people don't buy a hot plate for this they wind up using their hair dryer because they don't have a hot plate at home and then having to take your battery out risk cracking your screen or something while you're doing it when you could just have a device where you do this and you get all the same liquid resistance like it's I don't understand why you would want to do that. You Just the fact that you have to go to a repair shop to replace a battery rather than buy it yourself or go through an, a miserable 20 to 40 minute waste of your time. It's like, why do people advocate for this? What propaganda is out there that I'm missing that causes people to believe that not being able to replace the battery in a product that they own is better than being able to replace the battery in a product that they own? Because there, there's some level of propaganda that I'm missing out on. There's some level of, of salesmanship that I'm missing out on for the fact that manufacturers are not only able to get people to be okay with the sealed in battery, but I'm starting to see posts where people are actually claiming that they prefer it. It's not, yeah, I, I don't like the sealed in battery, but I like the fact that it has a wide angle lens and a normal camera, and I like that it has better battery life and a stronger processor, so I put up with it. It's not that people are tolerating it, it's that they're actually advocating in favor of something that makes their device more of a pain in the ass to repair and put a timer on my device, ensure that it will only last this long. I, I just don't get it, because again, look at this, look at this, look at this, completely water resistant in salt water for a swim. Boink. Pops right out. I think at the end of the day, something that's really important to take note of is that this type of propaganda is not what's responsible for things being the way they are. It's us. I mean, like, why does this stuff work? Because people believe it. Just something to think about. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.